Welcome everyone, Costini here with a discussion about one of the most broken systems currently in the game and that is of course the Imperial Authority system. Why is it broken is well fairly simple. So let's say one electric count, in this case Averland, takes control over a territory of another electric count, in this case Wizenland, which controls Null. Well, here's the thing that happens. After the end turn, unless there is some other event like a quest battle popping off or something along those lines, you will get this event coming at the end of the turn, which allows you to give back the region to its original owner. So in this case, uh, Wizenberg will be returned to Wizenland, and I'll gain one Imperial Authority for this. But here's the thing, and what I've been doing this entire campaign as Baltar's Argyll. I declared war on Wizenland, and I took these, pro these regions for myself. And since I'm still at war with them, I can, what I can do at the end of each turn, though I won't do it in, the, in this case, but what I can do here is I'll take this, uh, this territory, I'll occupy it, next turn, I'll, um, ne next turn, I'll uh, trade it to it Everland. To see, and after that, I'll get another event, which will trigger, uh, I'll get another event, which will trigger, um, once I give this territory to Everland, I'll get another event where Nuln demands basically its return. I give that uh, to them. Yes, I'm going to lose some fealty with Averheim really care about that and then I gain Imperial Authority it is a way to get an infinite amount of Imperial Authority if you're playing as Balthazar Gelt or as Karl Franz like let, let me just demonstrate this again so over here these two regions I conquered them myself and then I uh, traded them to Averheim and then the event pop up, uh, popped off uh, where Nolan is basically demanding its return and now they're gonna demand their return again and because of <laughs> this ridiculous event I can get an infinite amount of Imperial Authority now the reason this is broken beyond the obvious that I'm making money by the way every time this happens so every time I'm taking a region I'm selling to Averheim I'm getting paid by Averheim for that region and then I ask uh, then the event comes up to ask for its return well then it's um then it's being given to a faction I'm hostile with so I just uh take it over again sell it again to Averheim again and, and again uh over here during the co course of uh, this campaign now it didn't uh start in this uh now, it didn't uh, come up here because another Imperial Authority event uh, came up. But over here, I'm just going to sell this region. 2,600 to Averheim. Yes. Welcome, my countrymen. And I just keep doing this again and again and again during the course of the campaign. And I basically can get an infinite amount of, uh, of Imperial Authority. Now... Why is this so very significant? Well, I'll tell you why very simply. Why a lot of Imperial Authority is so very significant. One, you can use Imperial Authority uh, to confederate the other faction. So the way confederations work is you need to get fealty level to 10 and then you have to play, uh, pay free Imperial Authority. Uh, in order to, you have to pay free Imperial Authority in order to gain control of the faction. But here's the thing, on top of that, if you declare war on another Imperial faction, which I did here in, the, in this case, and I defeated their army, if you declare war on another Imperial faction, that's also free Imperial Authority. The system is designed so you don't just conquer the Empire by force if you're playing Gelt or Karl Franz. The reason it's broken is for obvious reasons, because you have a way of getting infinite Imperial Authority, especially if you are at war. So I declared war some turns ago, and I more than made up any Imperial Authority I've lost with them, and I've also made up the Imperial Authority that I've lost um, um, with, with, because Hawkland was destroyed. And now, all I do 
over here is come over here, take this territory, wait one turn, or I could just return it right now. Though, of course, in that case, uh, Gelt will not be able to replenish, but okay, I just sell it again to Averheim, 2,000 money, uh, 2,000 gold, and I keep doing this again and again and again. I don't have to care at all about the mechanics of the Empire. I don't have to care at all about playing a proper Imperial campaign because all I can because I can just do this continuously for however long I want. And bear in mind, because every time I'm taking um, I'm taking this territory, I'm also gaining experience. I'm also gaining prestige. Like I have an infinite amount of prestige. It is a really shitty campaign design. And people tell me like the Empire is fine. Does this seem fine to you? Does this seem like a mechanic that sh is, is working properly? Because to me, this seems like a very broken and abusable mechanic. In a way, few other mechanics are. And if they are abusable, they're kind of intended to be abusable. I'm pretty sure Creative Assembly did not want Imperial Authority to be designed around this idea of you basically being able to earn an infinite amount of money. And... Because of all the Imperial Authority, I can take Null, which also means, like, the significance of that situation, because I can take Null, I can get the Electric Count benefits, because if I can get a lot of Imperial Authority in my campaign, right, again and again and again, then that just simply means uh, that I can gain all of these through military force like if i can get like i know 20 30 imperial authority then i can just literally conquer the empire or large swaths of it and as a result of that get these um electro counts a lot faster than you normally would uh during the course of a, a, of a campaign as as the empire and that is pretty busted that is pretty broken and it's certainly not how the system is designed to be. Fun fact, fun fact here, by the way, what, what's also hilarious about what I'm doing over here, uh, because I keep giving this territory to Nuln, I'm actually gaining fealty with Nuln in, in the process for, uh, throughout this entire experience. And I'm curious to see if, if I am at war with uh, with them, uh, I'm really curious to see if I'm at war with them, what would actually end up uh, happening uh, during the court, uh, what would end up happening here uh, in, uh, in the course of this uh, uh, partic a particular campaign. Like, uh, if I gain 10 fealty with them, would the confederation event trigger even though i am at war with them although i could just you know get the peace the de peace deal with them as well yeah it is a pretty busted and broken system that we currently have at the moment in the game for the empire and it definitely needs a rework that's all there is to say costine here signing out don't forget to subscribe like and enable notifications and stay tuned for more